Hi Year 11, this video is designed to give you some help with the answers to the first plants assignment. Now, make sure you've watched the videos before you actually attempt the work because, well, they're there to help you and you should engage with the help that you've been given. So please, I didn't make those videos just for myself, I made them for you. Please, very welcome to check your work or check the videos before you start working through something. Now, basics, define what flowers are. Flowers are your reproductive organ in a plant so there are um, you have your male reproductive organs you have your female reproductive organs and they're enabling the reproductive process in a plant they're your site of pollination fertilization and of seed development state the function of the following stigma is the part of the flower that will be receiving pollen it's either feathery or sticky depending on whether it's wind or animal pollinated the anther is going to be the site of pollen production so it's the main male organ in a flower the filament is going to hold up the actual flower the style is going to hold up the stigma and the ovary is the site or where the female gametes the eggs are kept in the flower okay next set of questions explain why can pests be a problem um, for a wider ecosystem if it feeds on a flower or a seed well if you get rid of the seed or you get rid of the flower because it's been eaten then pollination won't occur pollination doesn't occur then the reproductive cycle of the plant won't occur and that can mean that anything that's going to be feeding on that plant or supported by it will have no food source so you lose your producer and you lose the resource that the plant is for any organism that has a relationship with that plant define the term pollination the transfer of pollen from one plant to another plant from the flower of one plant to the flower of another Define fertilization, the joining of the pollen grain with an egg cell. Identify two pollinator, pollinators you would find in the Waitakere ranges. Tui um, is an example, Keruru would be another. Um, you could have various bee species and insect species if you wanted to, basically anything that's going to pollinate a flower in the Waitak. Describe two adaptations supportive of an animal pollinating a flower. Um, so you're going to be looking for the bright coloration or the scent or the presence of nectar in the nectary um, or the tracking lines in the flower allowing the insect or the animal to know where it's going you could be talking the sticky stigma to support the reception of pollen by the flower you could be talking a feathery stigma if it was um, wind pollinated but given the question is asking for animal pollinated don't do that describe what seed dispersal is is the spreading of a seed from the parent organism why is it advantageous? Why is it a good thing? It reduces competition between the different offspring, the different seeds, and it reduces off, um, competition between the parent and the offspring. If they're near each other, that competition will be greater and will impact on their potential to survive and thrive and pass their genes on to the next generation. Also increases the likelihood of that species colonizing a new niche or a new habitat. And again, that's advantageous to the species as a whole in that it's more likely to survive and thrive. Okay, three ways animals can disperse seeds. Be specific and in relation to the animal and the adaptation of the seeds. So you could go with hooks. So a feature or so animals that's going to disperse. Um, you could go with a, let's go with a dog. Feature of the seed supporting dispersal would be hooks um, on the seed, allowing it to hook onto the fur. Description would be those hooks would be dry and basically would catch onto the seed coat and onto the dog and allow it to be transferred over a large region. Okay, another one you could use, you could talk about having a fruiting body. So um, a lot of bird species, um, keru, for example, will feed on the fruit of a bird. That fruit will basically mean that it will be attractive and wouldn't be eaten by that plant, but also will have a tough inner casing around the seed, preventing it from being digested. You could also go with the um, fruit. Uh, you could also go with uh, oh yeah um the bright coloration of the fruit um so like a berry and that's going to be attractive to different animal species that would work in that space as well um and that bright coloration would mean that the seed is going to be attractive so it'll be um, seen and eaten by the animal and that's going to be beneficial because that will aid the dispersal okay why is it a disadvantage to a plant if seeds are taken by animals that are not adapted to disperse the seeds? Because the seed could get eaten or be damaged by the um, animal that's eaten it. It won't have the adaptations 
to be able to um, basically support that dispersal. So an example I would use, um, certain seeds have a tough outer coating that's protective of the digestive system of the animal that nap is they're adapted to be eaten by. If eaten by something else, that seed coating could be destroyed and that would mean that the seed is never actually dispersed and that's going to be a problem. Basically, organisms that aren't adapted to disperse the seed are more likely to damage that seed and that would reduce the ability for effective seed dispersal to happen. 